this vid, we're gonna cover how to stay satisfied as a raw vegan. In order to do this, we need to firstly understand how satiety is reached. And I have five main elements that lead us to feeling satisfied after a meal. When you eat food, its mass accumulates in your stomach and that sends a signal to your brain that says, stop eating, you're full. You require a multitude of these to feel satisfied. So they're things like vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients. And this is often why we get in the scenario where we can sit down and have bags and bags of junk food without really feeling like stopping because processed items like this are really void of nutrition. They're what's referred to as empty calories. We do need calories though, and mainly from sugar. This is the easiest kind of fuel for us to make use of. There's no doubt that when something tastes better, it provides us with an element of satisfaction. And this is no accident. We've been designed to derive pleasure from tasty food because it keeps us healthy. In nature, when food is richer in nutrients, either because it's been tree ripened or it's grown in healthy soil or it's received adequate sunlight and water, it makes the fruit, the vegetable, the nut or the seed taste better. It's sweeter, it's saltier, it's just denser in flavor. The trouble is that with our modern day processing, our doctored food really hinders our ability to make healthy food choices using this original programming. Of course that bag of chips is gonna taste more flavorful than that conventionally grown strawberry. The mental component certainly can't be overlooked. So for instance, we might feel more satisfied if we go out to dinner with friends rather than eating alone at home just because the experience around the food was that much more substantial. Or for others, the opposite might be true. They might feel more satisfied eating at home where it would be easier to practice more conscious eating. Another example of how our mind is involved in our satisfaction has to do with the good old fashioned placebo effect. For example, we might have a doctor who's just talking on and on about the benefits of fish and how it's high in protein and that we need to be eating more protein. Or we might have a friend who really is touting the value of this new exotic superfood. So upon eating that fish or that superfood, there would definitely be an element of satisfaction with the thought that we're consuming something supposedly nourishing. Now that we understand the contributing factors, if you're someone who's feeling unsatisfied on your raw vegan diet, then here are some points that will help you troubleshoot your issue. And this is coming from myself, an eight year now raw vegan, and someone who's worked with many clients to get them feeling good on their diet. So I'd love for you to consider altering any of the following. Your fat intake. Most who are new to raw have the issue of over consuming fat. I went through this myself thanks to the gourmet raw food movement in this situation, we aren't getting enough calories from sugar and are left feeling, among other things like lethargic and gassy, unsatisfied after meals. To pendulum in the opposite direction, some strive for their idea of a perfect fruitarian diet and end up fearing fat. They find themselves always hungry because they haven't met their fat needs. I would say, however, that this scenario is quite rare. For the record, I'm in favor of a relatively low fat raw vegan approach. I also find the easiest to digest fatty foods are durian, avocado, and young coconut meat. Seeds and nuts come in second. Their digestibility can be improved upon by pre-soaking them. If you're under eating calorically, you're certainly gonna feel unsatisfied. This is often the case with beginners on the raw diet because whole foods are calorically less dense than their cooked counterparts. If you suspect that this may be the case for you, you'll need to up your calories, either by eating more calorically dense fruits, for example, dates, mame sapote, canistel, plantains, bananas, mangoes, white sapote, dried fruit, or juice, instead of filling up on watery stuff like melons, oranges, pineapple, for example. Or you can simply eat more in volume of your favorite produce. This ties directly into the stomach feel that we discussed earlier. So a raw vegan diet is great for our health because of the amount of fiber and water that occur naturally in whole foods. Trouble can arise, however, when someone isn't used to eating the high quantity of food that is necessary to sustain a raw diet. From their many years on a cooked food diet, they're used to feeling satiation after fewer bites. Their stomach hasn't learned to stretch to fit their raw meals, and so they're getting mixed signals. I ate two cups of melon, so my stomach feels full. I must be full because in the past, I would eat two cups of pasta and it would fill me up, but I'm still hungry. Am I hungry? This can be really confusing. 
Trouble can also arise if we're under consuming water and or fiber. Dried fruit and other dehydrated foods may not be satisfying to some because they're lacking in water. Juice may not be satisfying to others because it's lacking in fiber. I'm in this boat where I can have like a whole liter of orange juice and still feel kind of empty. We're all a little bit different, so depending on your body and your preferences, you can tweak accordingly. Eating raw vegan means that our diet will already be much richer in nutrition than a standard American one. However, some still find that they're not meeting their vitamin, mineral, or phytonutrient needs. This issue may come up if your diet isn't including the variety that you require. For instance, if you're surviving solely on bananas and dates, never eating any greens, you may acquire some deficiencies. It doesn't have to be all in one meal, but strive to include a full rainbow of colors in your diet. The satiation issue may also arise if a good portion of your produce hasn't been farmed organically. Finding quality fruit and veggies richer in nutrients will also just naturally taste better, providing satisfaction to your tongue. So consider opting for organic, growing your own, and or using supplementation. Juice, by the way, can be a natural form of supplementation if you're interested in a hit of easy to absorb nutrition. There have been a few cases that I've known of where tweaking one's macronutrient ratio to include more protein has been helpful. Still keeping protein plant-based and raw, but increasing it subtly can be effective for certain individuals struggling to stay satisfied. High protein, low fat, raw sources include a number of veggies, sprouted beans, some superfoods, and raw vegan protein powder. I've been in the position where it's dinner time, I'm hungry, but I don't really want fruit anymore because I've had that all day. I'll of course have my regular salad or green vegetables, but I'm desiring something more substantial without wanting it to be high in fat. On these occasions, my secret weapon is starch. I grab a few cobs of corn, sweet corn, or some green peas, and there's something about both of these that can really hit the spot. Make sure you're getting your fill of naturally salty foods. For myself to feel satisfied, I find it so important to have a savory meal every day. I think for most people this is true, and in going without one, one can definitely feel like something is missing and then futilely try and quench this emptiness with fruit. My favorite sources of naturally salty whole foods include tomatoes, celery, spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, kale, coconut water, and green powders like barley grass juice powder. Other examples of fruits that can be naturally salty include avocado, bananas, papaya, dried apricots, and melons. My secret weapon, and really this is like an inside scoop, because I, I feel like eating this is like eating a bag of chips. They're power greens. Well, they're referred to in most grocery stores as power greens. There's usually a tub or a bag of greens sold at the grocery store, typically with some kind of power name in it. And it's a mix of greens that includes at least spinach, baby kale, and baby Swiss chard. This one, baby Swiss chard, is so incredibly salty and delicious. I don't promote the use of refined salt, sea salt, rock salt, table salt, that kind of thing, because I find it to interfere with the body's natural ability to assess appropriate food intake levels. Putting salt on food is like dousing it with crack. You just want more and more. You'll eat past your hunger or overeat on foods that are void of nutrition. Prepared meats, pastries, condiments, candies, chips, any kind of junk food really are all good examples of easy to overeat foods. They're all typically saturated with sodium. Most of us come to raw food still having to heal from the effects of our previously unhealthy cooked and processed diet. For instance, you may be left with impaired digestion after years of hardened plaque. You may have Crohn's or IBS. So if digestion is challenged, your body may not be adequately breaking down, absorbing, or assimilating nutrients, which would surely leave one feeling unsatisfied. In cases like this, assisting with the digestion process by blending or juicing can be helpful. Long-term fiber and water are still important though, as they do work to clean out the colon. Using supplementation may also be something to consider. Consider that you may not be letting yourself get hungry. Keep in mind that if we're never actually hungry, we can never feel satisfied. Are you someone who's snacking throughout the day, eating and eating, but never feeling sated? It might be enlightening to try some solid meal times. Give yourself several hours in between eating and then have a complete serving. You might feel fullness for the first time. In another case, consider that you may not actually be experiencing true hunger. 
Have you made a habit of reaching for food in times of stress, pain, or discomfort? If this is what's really behind your bites, no version of a raw vegan diet or any diet for that matter will be able to satisfy you. Lastly, I wanna talk about the value of mono meals. The more variety we're eating, the more we're stimulating our taste buds. By continually introducing our tongue to new flavors, we can find ourselves on an endless nibble fest. This is what I like to refer to as the buffet scenario. You keep going back for more to try different foods because there are so many exciting tastes on offer. By contrast, mono meals help us get in touch with our true satiation. Sit down to eat one fruit, and when you begin to feel kind of bored, so to speak, of that flavor, you're likely done. Try for at least one mono meal of fruit a day and see how that feels. Food is more than just sustenance, as most of us have been brought up with such a culture around its harvest, preparation, and presentation. When first coming to a raw diet, many do feel like there's something missing out. Their family's preparing their traditional dishes in the kitchen, friends are going out to the local pizza joint, colleagues share celebratory donuts in the break room, they sit at home and eat their meal of six bananas alone. I'm all for simplicity, but raw doesn't have to be, and it certainly doesn't have to be boring. Raw food can be as simple or as complex as you'd like. If you love cooking, you can still sate this creative desire by crafting special raw food dishes and having fun with their presentation. You can share your treats with your friends and family. You can create new culture around the management and preparation of your food. You can also reinvent past traditions by incorporating healthier ingredients, make raw versions of your old favorites, you can access the raw vegan community online and arrange or attend potlucks. And you can still go to restaurants with your mates, just learn how to order differently. Do whatever you need to do to make the experience around food more supportive of your meal satisfaction and of your dietary goals. I also recommend two videos that I've done on this topic, Eating Raw Socially and Why Raw Vegans May Be Antisocial. As a special bonus point, I wanna share my recipe books. They're an easy way to take care of this mind element if you want to learn how to jazz up 80-10-10 in the kitchen. These recipes teach you how to create the variety of textures and tastes that we need to keep things interesting while also maintaining a low fat profile. In addition, I show you how to incorporate herbs and spices which are really important for satisfying that savory tooth and combating cooked food cravings. Check those out here, I have over 100 recipes, most of which are even overt fat free. And I want to leave you with a really important takeaway from my own like I said, eight year experience now. That's crazy, it's been that long. <laughs> and also my experience coaching people for many years on their raw vegan diet. So I see a simple trend that when we're craving cooked food, we're often just desiring salt. And now we know of a variety of veggies naturally rich in sodium. When we're drawn to fatty foods, like handfuls of nuts, for example, we're really just in need of calories from sugar. And now we know that we can get that naturally from fruit. It's pretty simple, it just takes time like anything new to develop different habits and to tweak certain components so they better match our personal needs. If any of this was helpful, please give it a like and if you've even made it to the end of this video, I commend you, it's been kind of a long one and I also commend you for being so interested and motivated and curious about pursuing your own health because I know it's a journey from my own experience. I know it's a journey and I wish you all the best on that. See you next video. Bye.